Hey guys, so it's here bringing you another video. Welcome back to Patch Note Breakdown and apologies, it's a day late. Just very quickly, I've been a bit all over the place in life at the moment with Maya and everything and it was half past eight in the night. I forgot about it was Tuesday and Patch Note. I was really tired. I was literally falling asleep in this chair and I said to Queen Pleb, I'm going to go to bed. Before, before I turned off my PC, I did my like final checks of the night, went on LOL Reddit and boom, Patch Notes. And I was like, oh no. I was so tired I couldn't have perked myself back up to do the recording and edit and upload it so apologies for that uh, and then secondly uh, just a cool thing uh, that just uh, uh, say you know thanks to Riot in a way um, I had a delivery from Riot today and I'll put it up on the screen it's a Christmas gift so we usually get a Christmas gift from Riot every year but yeah it's a it's the new Poro pillow I think it is available in the merch store um, but yeah, the new Poro Pillow, a Poro plushy, and some Poro pins. And obviously, I don't ever really expect Christmas presents from companies and stuff, but it, it's nice when they happen. Uh, I'm actually going to Riot's Christmas party next week, so um, I don't know, maybe I'll wear it then, or is that too obvious? I don't know. Uh, but I was also told that that is one of two deliveries that I should be getting before Christmas, so... I have no idea what the next one is, so uh, if it's something crazy and exciting, I'll share it with you guys, obviously. But anyway, patch notes. Uh, this is the last patch note of the year, which also makes it the last patch of season 2023. So as this is the last patch of this season, a uh, question to you guys. I'm probably going to do it like maybe a video summary of the season. So specifically because this is a patch note video, my, my ask to you guys is... What has been your opinion in terms of balance? Because patch notes balance the game. What's been your opinion about the balanced state of League of Legends in season 2023? Is it good? Is it bad? And I know a lot of people, you know, there is always a pretty strong negative connotation to balance in League. But you have to remember, it very much depends what type of player you are. If you're one of the players that the meta has suited and everything, you probably have loved the balance. And that's the thing, you know, wherever you have an opinion in something and it may not suit you, if you flip the coin, it's suiting other people. So like someone out there has loved the balance this year if they if they love all the champions that have been very strong. So well, let me know. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a pretty big change in many aspects in the next season with the map changes and the item changes. So if you're a fellow mage player, hopefully our time to shine will finally be next year because it hasn't really been our time to shine in two, maybe now three years. So hopefully that will be pretty cool. So let's get into it. So the overview um, is uh, Briar and Ivan are getting nerfed. Briar once again. Uh, Azir is getting buffed. Brom, Galio, Gragas, Cassante buffed again. Leona, Lucian, Mordecai, Kiana, and Zeri. So one thing I, I will just very quickly say, and one of my opinions about balancing recently and I think this is probably not an unpopular opinion. I think it's a popular opinion for the most people. I really, really dislike the obsession with new champions not being allowed to be weak for a few patches. Just for Riot to work out more stuff. There's a reason why Cassante has been nerfed so much. And the one patch he's like a little bit weaker than he may should be, you know, that's still arguable he's instantly getting a buff again. And it's like, he doesn't need a buff. There are many champions weaker than Cassante right now. Let's be honest. There's many champions that are weaker. He's been in the patch note constantly being nerfed. Leave him alone for a few patches. Because what's likely going to happen is you're going to buff him. He's going to be a problem again. And then he'll be nerfed again in the new year. Like, let's be honest, that's probably what's going to happen. I think Riot needs to sometimes just calm down, especially with the more modern champions, and just give them more time to be weak, because then that gives them more time to work out actually how to make them strong without being overbearing. And obviously, Zeri is there. She has been one of the biggest patch champions this year. Cassante has, and Briar's obviously been a nightmare for them to balance with yet again more nerfs. It's crazy. Uh, and obviously the new champion, uh, with as you can see here on the right, these are the new things that are coming into the game, mainly skins, the Winter Blessed line. Uh, for some reason, if anybody knows why, we've got a Crystal Mor Mortos. I don't know why I said it like that. Ash skin, no idea what that is. Um, but then, yeah, Huawei is coming in. Huawei looks crazy in a few aspects. Is he going to be a balanced nightmare? You know, are we going to see Huawei in the next eight patch note videos? Maybe. Um, so yeah, I, my, my wish 
if you know i wish upon a star of something to do with league of legends riot let especially the newer release champions they let them be weaker for a longer period than two weeks it's okay for Cassante to be a 49.7 percent win rate or whatever instead of being a 55 like for two weeks just give it an extra two weeks don't I don't want to see Cassante in more patch notes. I don't want to see Briar in more patch notes. Nerf it, work out actually what to do when they're weak and not instantly buff them again and then force them to be a problem. It's just silly. Um, so all this stuff will be out by the time this video comes out. Uh, new thing though, uh, a setting. Cast at maximum range toggle. In this patch, we've added a new toggle setting that will affect how champions cast their abilities when the player inputs the command outside of max range. Ooh, go to options game, clamp cast target location within max range, and boom. With the toggle turned on, abilities will automatically be cast at max range if the ability was cast outside. Okay, this is why I like doing these videos because some people won't get what that means. This is a change that they were doing to specific champions. The best example I think I can give is Annie. I believe they did this to Annie's Tibbers, and no, maybe even her W. It might have been both. I've, it might have been W and Tibbers. It was one of them at least. But let's just let's just use the Annie Tibbers example. It might have been a W. But anyway, what this does, and Syndra also had this as well, is let's say before they updated th this specific thing that they're now giving to every champion, I guess, as an option, is if you wanted to cast Tibbers here, but Annie's over here, so that would mean your Tibbers range, if Annie was here, would be behind where you actually want to cast it. Before they did the change, if Annie pressed Tibbers, it would just be cast here because it's it's casted to the maximum range rather where Annie wants it to be cast. When they did the update, basically what it did, it made, okay, Annie wants to cast Tibbers here. It's out of range. Okay, Annie casts it. She runs a bit. And then as soon as she's in the maximum range, it casts the Tibbers immediately. It's a pretty nice option for especially skill shots like that. Um, and what I'm guessing is some players liked it and some players didn't. They're giving the players the option. Syndra definitely had this update as well. So I don't know if they're going to revert those champions and go, hey, if you want that, just put the option on. What I would say, and again, I don't know if Riot has the technology, um, this should be, and I know it's not hard to be like, oh, you can change the setting on and off each game. But there are some champions you'd want this on and there's some champions you would probably not. It would be cool if you could have it champion specifically bound to be on or off. But I don't know if they have the technology. But that's pretty good. So new champion away. Um, what do I think of him overall? I think he's cool. I think I'm going to enjoy playing him. I don't love how he looks, but that's fine. Um, I think he also could be a balanced nightmare having 10 abilities. Um but he should be in the more skillful side of league uh unlike some of their more later latest champions that they've had even again riot herself admitted that Cassante was more easy briar was more easy neferi was more easy in the dev meeting i was in they literally was like her is kind of coming back to skill um and that's fine again just to, that's not a dig that you know new champions have been easy to play somewhat you need easy champions and you need hard champions you need all I would just say, obviously, it's just more of a balance issue that just because those newer champions are easy, they've also been OP, but that's more been bad balancing. If they got on top of balancing well, those champions should be fine. When it comes to Huawei, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, um, I do think partially, and I haven't played him, and I will. Um, again, I, I probably should make videos on the PBE of gameplay. I just don't like doing it anymore. And I know, you know, for a content creator or views and all that stuff, it probably would be a good idea to do that. But it's just such a bad experience to play on the PBE because of lag and everything. I just don't like it. I, I liked my first experience of playing a new champion to be on 20 ping like I should be instead of 180. Um, so I will try to play him this week. Um, I do kind of see, even though he has 10 abilities... I think most people are not going to use all 10 abilities. I think he's going to have actively like six to seven used all the time. And there's going to be a bunch that people just kind of forget exist. I think a lot of his W is going to be underutilized. I think his Q and E spells are going to be used. 
I don't know how many people will actively be really using the W, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to playing him at least, so hopefully he'll be fun to play. All right, Azir. Um, again, very cool champion, Azir. I like him. I've never really... I've played him, but I've never clicked with him. Like, I should. He's a cool control mage, but maybe I should just give him a better go, but I don't know. Um, but we're happy that Azir has a new suite of uh, items to consider. So yeah, remember they kind of brung back more attack uh attack uh speed and soldier damage azir rather than just burst azir um but yeah nash's tooth finally functions as players expect it should looking to into his builds leandri's nashes luden's nashes and crown nashes are all performing a little bit worse than they should oh so they they were in last patch so they're, they're bringing back one of the smaller nerfs he received in 13.24 so they're just reversing it so they're just giving it slightly better damage scaling but nothing absolute major Hide behind Brom. Base mana regeneration increased and R knockup duration increased. So the problem with Brom, you can buff him and stuff, but <sighs> Brom is a subject of being too good in the class that he's in. And for those that are like, what the hell does that mean? Brom is a tank. And when he when I say he's a tank, he's a tank. He doesn't do any damage because he is a tank, and that is what Riot have made him to be. And he is, that is, that is, is it. He protects, he jumps, he has resistances, he's tanky, he has CC, he doesn't do damage. In modern day League of Legends, that's bad. Most tanks that you'll name on the top of your head do damage nowadays, even if they're a tank. So is it likely that Brom is never going to be played again? Probably not. So even these buffs are going to happen. I doubt they're really going to do much. To make Brom meta or viable again, the right need to do one of two things. One, give Brom damage. Or two, actually make tanks don't do any damage. Because if other tanks like, like Brom, Nautilus is a good example. Nautilus is a tank support. Does way more damage than Brom. So why would you play Brom? So if they reduce the damage in tanks that were basically make tanks tanks again, and Brom then's like, hey, you're back with me, everyone. You don't do damage either, but I, I don't. But we're all tanky and provide CC. Okay, I can be played again. That's the problem with Brom. So, yeah. Uh, Briya, are they finally... Oh, my God. I was going to say, are they finally going to do the big nerf that makes her stop being like a meme, basically, that Riot can't balance their game because they keep having the same champions in the patch notes every single week or every two weeks? So base, and what I would say is, uh, yeah, it looks to be because everything is getting nerfed. Base stats, Q, W, E, R. The only thing that hasn't been actually nerfed is her passive. So base armor decreased, attack speed ratio increased, though. That's a buff. Um, Q damage increased, that's a buff. Why are you buffing a champion that you can't balance? That must be wrong, no? That is wrong. That's not a buff, that's a nerf. Riot, please. Uh, w bonus attack speed decreased, E damage resistance decreased, healing decreased, R damage decreased, and damage type changed to magic. Ooh, okay. So Briar continues to devour her opposition in the jungle as players continue to get better at her. It's not, by the way, just that. It's just, she is just really strong. Um, and she's very easy to play is the combination of two. Um, so we need to pull her power back a bit more. While we're nerfing all her builds with these changes, we're targeting at lethality builds more. To that end, we're shifting R to magic damage and throwing in a buff to her attack speed ratio. With the attack speed ratio change, Briar's overall attack speed will be higher when building Stride Breaker, while staying close to the same on builds that don't purchase any attack speed. This should help make up the nerf to W. So she's squishier early, but her attack speed ratio is better it's the same at level one though the damage of q is going down um just flat nerf of damage starting at level two the w bonus attack speed is also going down the e chilling scream damage reduction is going down so she's not as tanky when she's holding that in and the healing of it is also going down considerably at rank five three percent of maximum health less that's a lot and then the certain death, the damage of it is staying the same flat, but it's a twenty, uh, sorry, a twenty-five percent bonus AD nerf, and instead of it doing 
physical damage, it's now doing magic damage. That's a big, big difference. So, yeah. Um, I still probably would say she's going to be strong. These aren't like the biggest nerfs I've ever seen. And considering she's been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed again... Again, I would have kind of expected Riot themselves to even be a bit embarrassed by it, going, right, we just need to get rid of this champion out of patch notes. I expect her to pop up again, if I'm completely honest. So, yeah. Galio, Q cooldown decreased, Mr. Galio. Again, I have said the problem with Galio. I remember he got a, a buff recently, but it was the wrong buff. It's yes, he's an anti mage, but you still need to do a lot of damage in league. It's like so it's, well, I talk about tanks. Yes, you can be a tank, but if you don't do a lot of damage, you're useless. Like you have to do damage in modern in the modern game. It's just the way the game's gone, or the way Riot's made it. This will help him. So his Q is his main damage source. Um, so yeah, a two second buff to it at rank five, you do max your Q. So that will be nice, but no actual damage number buff. So again it's not gonna make him meta but if you're a galio player you'll probably be happy about this is what i would say but yeah Karagus. passive a cooldown now decreases with level that's quite nice so obviously yeah they he did get a nerf um that increased his passive cooldown from 8 to 12 seconds they've updated it so basically it went to 12 seconds the whole time and it's now going down as the game scales. I think that is good. Again, goes to eventually a six second cooldown, but you have to be level 16. There's quite a lot of games in League nowadays that don't really make it to level 16, you know? So I, I kind of am okay with that. Better sustain for the big boy. Ivan. I don't remember the last time that I've seen an Ivan. Uh, he's a very special... Well, he was he's a very specialist champion, apart from a few months ago or something. Remember, he was really OP for a couple patches that they built full AP. I even played it, even in top lane. He was crazy. Uh, but he's kind of gone back to being his niche self, and I don't see him. So maybe I've just missed him being overpowered or something. So his base health is going down, and his E slow is also going down. But yeah, literally, is Ivan remained unaffected with the other... Uh, the When other junglers' clears were made slower in 13.20, as a result, he's become one of the best junglers in the game. I don't see Ivan at all. So I am very weird about that. Mr. Cassante. W mana cost decrease, damage increase. Oh, great. A tank that needs more damage. So we overshot our nerf on Cassante last patch, but we're happy with parts of his kit's dress. Again, last patch. It's okay if you wanted to leave him for another few patches. People have been fed up with this champion. And again, how do I say? The league player base, and it's not just a league thing, it's video games in general. If something has been really annoying and very frustrating for the average player, you don't immediately want that thing to be buffed up again to be like, oh, it's back, because you're annoyed with it still. You know, it's the premise of when Riot, like with Akali, when the Akali rework came out and people were really over it. It was every single game. It was frustrating to play against. Riot over nerfed it on purpose because that made people's mind kind of go hey, she's not that bad. Look how weak she is now. And then they purposely buffed it up again. Like that, that was their plan the whole time. I don't know if they what that's what they did with the Cassante. Did they almost already have this buff planned two weeks down the line? But I think he has been... Cassante, I'd say, is one of the... is a uh, unicorn in the situation because he is so stupidly annoying of being so tanky, and even as a tank, he does damage, but then, oh, he presses an ultimate, and he does more damage than you anyway, like, it, he is silly, like, the, it's what I've said, unfortunately, about power creep in League of Legends, the power creep at any video game naturally goes up over time, and when it comes to Riot continuously wanting more and more champions in the game, there's only so many concepts you can do, and I think one of the biggest issues here with more modern champions it isn't just their balance, it's their kit. Or they're even, if you go beyond their kit, it's the concept. Senna is somewhat still a problem here or there because she's a support but also an AD carry. Cassante is a tank but also a damage dealer. The concepts are hard to kind of overcome in terms of they're always going to be a problem. T to a certain degree, unless you over-nerf it. 
that's the problem is senna is decent again and she has been borderline over overpowered for a while but before that she was awful because she got buffed up well, she got over nerfed because she was a problem and because of her concept of being an ad carry support and she could swap between the two that's crazy you know as just a concept and i think cassante is exactly the same but yeah Right, let's continue. Leona, W bonus armor and magic re resist increased and R damage increased. Hey, look, cuz, your concept about tanks getting more damage is true. Yes, it is. And that's why I said the Brom one isn't going to do anything because he got no damage buff. Um, so W Eclipse um, bonus armor is going up considerably. Nice. And the bonus magic resist is also going up. So that's pretty good for Leona. And then her ultimate is doing more damage. 50 more damage. Whoa. 50 more damage is pretty good in lane phase. Like, that's not bad. That's the difference of getting a kill or not. 100%. That's pretty good. Wow. Lucian, E cooldown decreased. So, uh, the problem with Lucian, he still doesn't scale in comparison to a lot of the modern game. So, I, I don't see Lucian really returning for a long time properly. Uh, Mordekaiser, Q damage increased. Hey, damage buffs. Uh, and R now reveals the target upon initial cast. That's a nice quality of life change. So, like, they can't hide away from you instantly. You see them. Um, so the damage buff is getting an AP buff. So that is good for, for scaling. And, yeah, upon casting the ability, it reveals the target. So that's really good. So, like, if something's just about to go into stealth, but you just managed to get your ultimate off, they're revealed. So that's pretty nice. Kiana. Uh, frustrating champion, but I would even admit I don't think she's that strong right now. So base mana and mana growth increase. So yeah, just mana things. Let's uh, survive lane phase a bit easier when it comes to laning against, the, like, especially non-mana things. If you're a non-mana champion, or sorry, if you're a mana champion laning against a non-mana champion, it's very frustrating. So uh, that's fair. Talon. Range Q now also resets Talon's attack timer. Okay, quality of life change. So when cast at range, Q will now also reset Talon's attack timer. This has been updated to match the functionality of his Q when cast at melee range. Okay, there you go. All right, so bug fixes to Velkoz. Um, so fix the bug where the first half of his rift would fizzle if, if Velkoz died. So that is actually quite nice because sometimes you may have got a kill if the W went the whole way, but it fizzled out. And the E fixed a bug where the spell would fizzle out when uh, Velkoz flashes or is knocked back at max range. And then Tectonic Distribution's missile will now spawn at Velkoz's original location if he flashes or is knocked back during the cast. Ooh. I don't know what that fully means. Is that good for him or bad? I presume that's good. But well, yeah, we'll see. Zeri. Uh, AD growth increased, W damage increased. Oh, God. Have they not learned their lesson? Uh, whoa! That is... Whoa! That is one of the biggest AD buffs I've ever seen in League. She had a 1.3 AD growth per level, and she's now going to a 2. That is a big buff. Ooh. Oh, God. And then the W, the damage, is going up as well. Oh, no. Are we going to just start seeing Zeri all the time again? Uh... <laughs> Oh, uh, no. And that's it. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, and there we go. Ranked schedule update. So, this is an update. Um, oh, that's later. That is later, I think, than expected. No? I think it was supposed to be, like, January 4th to 6th, uh, the new season. So, it's a bit later than um, anticipated. So, more time to climb, everybody. So uh, the, this season, season 2023, split two ends midnight or just before January 9th, according to your own local time. And then split one will start uh, mid, uh, well, yeah, on midnight, I guess. Um, on January 10th, apart from Latin America one and North America. So a lot of you watching this North America, you guys will start at 7 a.m. instead. And Latin America is 9 a.m. instead. Why? no idea so i could in theory start playing ranked league of legends on the new season january 10th the moment it strikes strand january 10th um so yeah where's the us here's the us so greenwich mean time uh yeah so it ends at midnight on january 9th um but there we go so 
that does seem to be a bit longer than expected. I don't know if they've announced what the what the second split Victoria skin is. Obviously, the first split Victorious was a Nivea. They haven't, I don't think, announced what this one is, which is a bit weird. That's a bit late, if there is even one. Uh, and then Arena. So I'm, by the way, just to say, as I've always done, I do two videos a day every day. I will be taking basically a week off around Christmas. I'll be probably taking... My last day of streaming will likely be the 23rd or, you know, 23rd of December. And I'll probably be taking from the 24th to probably my, my next stream back would likely even be the 31st. And it might even be going from the 31st into the new year. I might do like all the way into midnight and stuff because I'm, I'm not really somebody that does partying or something on midnight. But maybe I can stream and that'll be fun. Um... But yeah, as the reason I say that is obviously that means I have to bulk record a whole week and even more than really a week ahead of content because obviously I don't want to come home from visiting family and having a good Christmas to then immediately being, oh Jesus, I have no content. I need to now go mad and record. So I would likely by the 23rd on my channel want to have an, at least content on the 23rd of December, I would probably want until January 2nd or 3rd uploaded. So that's like a week and a half worth of content. Arena, I love doing and I love playing. And I think Arena videos will make for some really good second videos of the day. Um, hopefully you guys agree and hopefully you guys will enjoy them. So yeah, uh, not every day, obviously. But I think, you know, if two or three of those second videos in the week and a half that I'm away. If two or three or maybe even four of those second videos are arena, maybe a few matches of arena within each video, I think that would be pretty cool. So yeah, I'm not going to go obviously through all the arena changes, by the way. Uh, but yeah, a huge amount of class and individual champion balances, which are below. Hex gates have been added to all four arenas. I've heard mixed things about that from the PvE players. Uh, I've also, people really dislike this change. So death is not the end. After a delay, you can revive your dead teammate. I don't like that change. Because again, that just buffs the tank carry play style of you just build something that doesn't, you just play something that doesn't die and build something hyper carry. And then your tank never dies. The carry dies, but then, oh, the tank can survive and just revive. I think that's a bit boring in a way. Uh, they removed some cameos, but they've added new ones, four new items, and 60 new augments. Um, so yeah, there's all the information if you wanted to go, to go into it. And every, basically every champion has got individual balancing, more or less. Again, I say that, and there's not a Nivea in there, I can see. But a lot of champions have got individual balancing. Um, I'm not going through all of them now, because that would be insane. Um... ARAM Clash. I might be trying to do ARAM Clash, but it, it potentially won't be with the Clash team. I'm potentially going to do it as a bit of a fun thing with my kind of old WoW friends. Some of you may know the names, but like Jeebus, Tentry, Galzuk, and Queen Pleb has said that she wants to play my girlfriend. So we're going to see if we, if, we, if, we, if we can get everybody, if they can play, then I'll try and do it more as a fun group thing um i probably won't stream it i'll record it but um yeah that that should be a bit of fun so we'll see um, we're only going to be able to potentially do well maybe one day i'll do it with my fun group my friends and then the second day which are they're still my friends but maybe the clash team on the sunday i don't know we'll see but yeah so it's the aram clash club club english uh mythic shop is now whoa really opening up there seems to be a lot of things in the Mythic store. Um, leaving, by the way, does that mean, again, any of these that I don't own, I'll be able to reroll for it. But again, I don't massively... Some people may have noticed I'm not really keeping up with the loot chain, like everything loot in League of Legends nowadays. It's for two reasons. Three, really. One, I, I haven't fully agreed with Riot's monetization moving forward, the $200 gin skin and stuff. I think that's really stupid, and I don't love the idea of, like... I'm a whale in Riot's eyes, and I know I am spending so much money. But the way that you stop companies doing stupid things like that $200 gin skin is you stop spending money. You have to basically vote with your wallet, and that's they go, oh, we shouldn't do that again. And if the whales like me stop spending, then they will pay attention a bit. Um, but yeah, that's one reason is I haven't agreed with their monetization uh, methods. 
uh, two. <laughs> so many people for years were like, Huzz, you've got the league partner buff. You don't need to spend it. And that kind of links with number three is I and it's very practical and I'm not trying to say it as a moan. But yeah, I don't make as much as I used to from years ago. Um, So constantly spending riot points and, you know, the videos realistically didn't really make the money back when I don't have to because of the league partner buff. It just doesn't really make sense. You know, it, it just doesn't anymore. But yeah um but there we go that is gonna be it some overall interesting changes hilarious that Briar's getting nerfed more literally laugh my head off about that but then or hilarious as well that Cassante immediately is getting buffed again mad uh but anyway that's gonna be it if you guys did enjoy sorry it was a day late but hopefully you, you will still use this video um but yeah like comment subscribe see you guys next time goodbye Call down. Regime.